afternoon, ladies and gents. It's Simon Brown here uh, doing the introduction for today's webinar. I've been doing a presentation this afternoon, and, and, and he, you know, it's always a question, what do we talk about, what are we going to do? And he said to me today, you know, let's actually under look at, 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 at really, uh, uh, in a sense, I suppose, going back to a basic one, although I think it's not basic, but it's, I suppose, core price, and that's understanding price action. And in a sense, that is the core of it. I think it's probably a bit more challenging than, than one would, than certainly than we, we expect. I think it's a critically important one, uh, and I'm not going to do too much of the talking. I'm going to hand over to Elwyn. If you've got questions, you can pop them into the box. Certainly don't necessarily hold them for the end of the webinar. Uh, if they're relevant to a particular point, uh, put it into the Q&A box, and I'll interrupt Elwyn, and we can take that point right there and then, rather than leaving it right for the end of it. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand over to Elwyn. I've got to hit some buttons and the like. Uh, give us a second. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if it doesn't sound like me, it is me. I've just <laughs> got a bit of a cold. So, as I said to Simon earlier, uh, I imagine sounding a bit like Barry White on with laryngitis. So, okay. Um, just bear with me. I don't think it's too unclear. Um, and forgive me the sniffles every now and then, but um, I'll not do my best to reduce to keep those to a minimum. Okay, as Simon said, what we want to do is price action. Um, and, and price action is a, it is a basic, basic um, concept or you know, understanding in the forex market or in any market that you trade. But what I find is that new traders can seldom understand price action. Um, and it's really one of those things that once you've gone through technical analysis and you get into grips with trading, that you can come and revisit price action and really try and understand price action. Um, and that's when traders start getting to grips with it or when, or when they even realize that they don't understand price action. Um, I get a huge amount of inquiries um, asking me to explain price action. Um, on that note, you know, if it, it would be really wonderful if one could make new traders understand price action and then teach them technical analysis because then it would all, the technical analysis part would be so easy. Okay, but so it's uh, one of those converse, inverse laws kind of things, I, was, I suppose. All right. Price action is what you see on your screen, okay? So moving averages, all the technical indicators that you can throw at your screen are derived from price action. All right, so, um, and, and that may sound cons confusing because you go like, well, okay, well, well, then I just need to look at those things, but not quite so. Um, because most indicators that you put onto your screen are lagging indicators. What you want to be able to do is understand why the market or what the market is doing when you look at a candle or a pin bar or um, you know if you take the candles and you convert them into bars which you um, can quite easily do um, I'm going to just quickly do it there's bars on my, on my screen now um, you can really clearly look at, at price action if you understand price action so um, and you know, ignore the, the, the three moving averages that are there. And that's what I'm trying to get across. Now, the other thing about price action, it's not absolute hard and fast rules. Um, it's the one bit of trading that you really do need a bit of understanding and interpretation and reasoning. You need to figure it out. What is the market telling you? Um, especially in Forex, where you can't see order flow. You cannot see what orders are placed if you're, for instance, trading the Z and you're trading it um, on full contracts, you trade a thing called the Dyro, um, and you can actually see the buy and the sell orders, and you can see how many um, contracts a specific buyer are sitting, and you can see there's 400 contracts on a buy at that level. Um, but in Forex, you can't see that. So the closest you can get to understanding order f or order, orders in the market is by looking at the price action that, that, that's ensued. Okay? So the price action happens, and that will tell you what the orders were like that were there just seconds before. All right. So the other thing I want, before we look at the charts, what I want you to imagine, uh, and it's not that difficult, let's give an, 
uh, let's look at a, at, at a given value in the market. Um, doesn't matter what that is. I'm going to draw a red line. Um, let's say there. Okay. At that line, um, this is on euro dollar 1.22057, but I'll just pick the line out of Okay, it doesn't matter. Let's say at that trading line, there are sellers sitting above that line and there are buyers below that line. All right? Um, as long as the market is in equilibrium, there's equal amount of buyers and sellers, that market does not move. It sits there. Okay. Now what happens? Let's say I'm a buyer and I get in at that line and the market starts moving a little bit against me. Where, what is my stop loss? My stop loss is the opposite of that. My stop loss is a sell in the market because I have to balance out. Okay? And what I'm trying to explain, uh, uh, maybe in a long-winded way, is that there's these primary moves in the market that we, for instance, we see one there. Um, I just bear with me, it will all become quite clear shortly. Okay, and there where the little blue triangle is, um, there's quite a strong move um, on the downside. Now, what happens in a move like that? It's not necessary that it's all sellers um, that's determining the market to go down there, or let me rephrase it. It's not all sellers that wants to make the market go down. What happens is there's a lot of buyers, for instance, that sit there, and once there's a certain amount of sellers that gobbles up the buyers, and the market starts moving down, they start triggering the stop losses. And then the market starts running on stop losses because it, as it triggers those buy stop losses, they become sellers. Okay, all those guys like me who are a buyer in the market become an involuntary seller. And I help really shove that market down fast. Okay, those are what we call primary moves. Now, those are the kind of moves we want to be able to determine with price action. And we'd like to determine them before they happen. Okay. Now, guys, those of you who've not had my um, Braveheart strategy, I suggest you get that. That strategy is really a price action strategy. Okay. Uh, it's a mini strategy, meaning it tags onto another strategy, any other strategy that determines levels at which you want to trade. But a lot of what I speak about today is all um, in, inside the Brave Art strategy, and you will understand the Brave Art strategy a lot better and how to apply it. Okay? Now, what we want to do is before you can trade price action or understand price action, you do want to determine levels in the market. Okay? Um, a turning point, a, a swing high, a swing low. Um, start with a level, somewhere where the market turned. Okay. From that point on, what the market is always going to move in little waves. It cannot just continuously go up or continuously go down. It has to come up and come down um, and pull back a little bit and then continue to go up. Okay. And part of the reason for that, and I'm sorry if this is long-winded, but part of the reason for that, so if a guy is lucky enough to get into the beginning of a move and he rides the move up for or he, he's got a target or he feels that he's nearing the end of that move or he's made enough profit, he takes profit and let's say he's a buyer and he's running up and he's made his 100 pips profit. When he gets out of that trade, he becomes a seller. All right? And we have these little waves in the market where the market pulls back. Okay? And, it's at, and, and it's at those moves that you want to start interpreting the, the price action in that area. What I do is I always look at at least three charts, um, three different time frame charts on the same currency pair. You know that. Okay? Um, I've spoken about that lots. Um, and although price action is awesome with a blank chart, it's really good with just a few moving averages. Okay? You don't need stochastics or MACDs or any of those things, but a few, a, a few moving averages really do wonders. Let me just delete this red line so it doesn't confuse us. Um, in front of me now, you will see a four-hour chart. Okay. The kind of things I'm going to just highlight, and I'm going to draw your attention to them, 
these are price action. Then we're going to look in, in depth as to what they mean. Let's, this is a um, very current chart, very much current. Um, let's look at this. Okay, that area there. I'm just going to change that to uh, yellow so it's not quite so dark. Uh, light, light yellow. Guys, I hope you can see this. All right, there we go. And I'm going to zoom into that. Okay, what I want to focus your attention on. We start off here, and I'm going to give you a triangle. Okay, there's the first triangle. I'm going to delete this little one here. So that you don't get confused, right? There's my little blue triangle. And we see a blue candle, all right? And I'm not going to trade that candle. I'm just trying to find a reference point from which to, to, to start evaluating the market. The market goes up nice and fast. One candle, big movement, all right? That's, you could say, buyers coming in, also tripping the, 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 the shorts um, or the sellers, stop losses, okay? The, mar the, the bar just before that was a red candle. Market moves steeply down, lots of sellers coming in, the whole retail stadium full of buyers coming in and throwing in their sales, um, and there was a big buyer there stopping them dead, and he gobbles up all their stop losses. Market, that's a nice big run up fairly quickly. Um, and then run out of sellers, or run out of buyers as you near the top of the second candle. And now the market goes back into equilibrium. Okay, equilibrium. Uh, you can see the very next, the third blue candle there. Very small candle, very little movement in the market. Um, quite a long tail to the candle. And you have to understand what's happening there. There are buyers, but there are no sellers. Okay? So the sellers are pushing the market down. And very quickly, the buyers pick up. There's no sellers to keep pushing that market further down. So at this point, the trend is still very much bullish. The next four hours that you get, that reverses. The, the, the buyers get that market up, but it's very quickly there's sellers that pulls that market back down to the body of that blue candle. You can see that's the range where it's traded. And that's where it started. That's where it ended. And we're going to look at the one hour for the same time frame and understand clearly what happened in those four hours. But I want you to start understanding that the buyers were drying up. The guys were not convinced that this market had moves left. So the big institutions you are trading are simply not putting orders in. There's not enough orders to push that market up. Okay. And the next candle confirms that. Okay. The market has a very high wick on that candle and it comes back down sharply um, and it even starts pulling down. You still don't trade. It's not a signal yet to trade. Look at the next candle. Okay, regardless of the body, but the entire candle is an inside bar. And that gives us a, an indication of what's really happening in the market here. That market tried to run up again. There were a few buyers that came in. They ran up. They failed to even reach the high of the, of the previous candle. So they couldn't even break the previous high. And there were absolutely no further buyers to sit up there. I wonder if I could just say Yes? I wonder if I can jump in here. A couple of folks saying, what's an inside bar? And I must say, I put a note there as well. Okay. okay, guys, I'm going to explain this very quickly, but if you go back to my other webinars, it, it's clearly in there, as well as on the, the, the Braveheart strategy. It's, it, 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 there's drawings there, and it explains the, the, the inside bars really clearly. But an inside bar is, in this case, I'm going to draw lines for you, um, where you have a candle, there, the extremes of this candle is there, right? And I'm talking about, I'm going to move, sorry, I'm going to move my arrow to that point so you can see which candle I'm talking about. The very next candle fits entirely into the range of the previous candle. Look at it. Okay, do you understand? Um, that's the close, the quickest I can explain this for you. Now you get that on the bullish side as well, um, and there's one here. Okay, that candle we started at, that's an inside bar. Okay, um, and you could have certainly traded that long, um, depending on what you wanted to trade, but I mean that 
range that you would have wanted to trade there, for instance, is you would have only traded, according to one of my strategies, at the top of that bar or at the entrance, at the close of that inside bar, which is there, and you took a range, a total range available to you is 57.9 points, but you would have made 28 or 30 points quite comfortably, okay, depending on your strategy. But do you understand an inside bar? Um, now, again, I refer to the Brave Art strategy because, of course, if you, if you download the PDF, the, the few candle patterns that really are worth you knowing so that you understand price action is contained in there. So if I just explain to you how to analyze that and you go and read the Brave Art strategy, you can understand price action a lot better and how to apply it to trading. Okay. Now, let me say that there's a misconception. A lot of people think price action is only valid if you can look at tick, um, tick charts where the, where, the, where the data is coming in instantaneous and that's price action. That's not true. You can look at a week chart and you can see price action. You could look at a daily chart and you can see price action. Okay? Price action is applied on whatever time frame it is that you want to, to, to trade on. Um, okay, so, but w what I'm trying to explain is what the reality of what happened in this market. Um, in that there is simply no longer buyers um, I'm trying to zoom this up as much as I can. Um, that's at the end of my zoom. All right. Um, and, and and if you were, for instance, now trading the Aussie, it would you be you on your diary where you see buyers and sellers. You would simply see there are simply no more buyers. There's one or two little buyers, and that's why this you have these long lines on top of your candle. The market went up and there were simply no more buyers. And as the sellers came in, they took the few buyer stop losses and this thing just runs back down to a level where there's some buyers sitting there. Okay? And now, now they're trading at that level. Or there's no buyers. So if in a, in, a, in a period where the market's really quiet and there's no liquidity, which for instance will be typically before um, uh, NFP, which is the non-farm payroll in America, which is the first Friday of every month, mostly. Unless that first Friday falls on the first or the second, then we find that they quite often move NFP over to the eighth or the ninth or the tenth, which is the following Friday, all right? Because they can't get their data um, released that quickly after month end. So, but on Thursday and Friday of NFP, of non-farm payroll, the market really just moves sideways. This is not every Friday, not every month, but certainly over the last few years, that's the norm, okay? There's always the, the exceptions, but that's the norm. And in a period of like that, the market has no liquidity. There's only the few idiots, me and a couple of my mates, who are insisting that we want to trade, and we make a few moves on the market, but really little. You'll find the market moves in a tight range, maybe 30 points up, down, up, down, up, down, and it sits there, and that's, that's called a consolidation. All right? Um, but what I want you to understand about price action is that because you can't see orders, you can't see orders in the market, you have to reason out what, when I look at a candle, what has really happened there. Um, and then figure out from there how you're going to trade that. Okay? What to do with that information. But what I want to do is just, and I'm sorry if I'm speaking too quickly, again, I was trying to cover a very broad topic in, the, in, in, in as little time as possible. Um, and what I, I said to Simon just before we came on and um, is that maybe for next month, um, late in August, Simon's okay if I chat about this? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, is that instead of doing a teaching webinar, is that maybe we, we, we do a just one lap trading session um, where we'll open the, the, tra the, the, the webinar software for a, a, a two-hour period and we, we, we run a trading room and maybe through the London Open um, and, we, and, and you guys come with, with strategies or questions live during the trading session and we can see how we um, fare on that and explain and, and try and answer and try and look at um, all the options to trade um, live for a, a solid two or two and a half hours or whatever. But yet, I generally find that the London session uh, two hours is about enough, you know. Um, all right, uh, I just want to find the same place on the one hour chart so we can see what we've been looking at. 
Okay, I'm going to just give you a line here. Nine, 19th of July at 8 o'clock. On the one hour chart, we're going to go to 19th of July at 8 o'clock. Uh, 19th of July, 8 o'clock. There we go. Okay, that's the one hour. Let's move this chart to it's nice and in the middle. Guys, can you see this? It's, the, the, the two red lines are on exactly the same time frame. That's, that means that candle opened at the same time. Look at the market running up on the one hour and failing spectacularly. Um, whereas on the four hour, all you see is the pin bar at the top of your candle or the wick. Um, in the one hour, you can see how... the, the we're in an uptrend, okay, and I'm going to quickly, I'm jumping around a little bit, but bear with me as we put this all together. Um, I'm going to just draw little squares as they're the quickest to draw. We're in an uptrend, all right? We have, for instance, yeah, let me just, um, a low point. We're going to say, right, we've identified a low point in the market here. Yeah? We've identified a high point in the market. We've identified a higher low, and this is important, guys, um, a higher low, but then there's no higher high at that point, okay? The, the moment that high was not a higher high, we are looking, all our warning bells are ringing and the warning lights are, are, are on, and we are ex expecting some kind of reversal or consolidation to start happening. We are not seeing a high high. Until we see that previous high broken, we now know but hang on, this market is in line for a change. I'm going to just call this one. Uh, okay, I don't know if waste time with that. All right. We then see the market still make another higher low. There. We're expecting a higher high still to come through or for that low to be broken, all right, which will be this level here. Now, this is an important in price action, and that's about the pattern Price action patterns for me is about higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, lower lows, okay? If you start identifying that, you really need very little else. Uh, and it's also a, a way of really limiting your stop losses or the losses that you take in the market. If you, if you identify these higher highs, higher lows on any time frame, you're going to limit your stop losses. If you, if you make a very clear... Um, definition for yourself where you will get out if whatever rule it is you make but if, if that low gets broken you are no longer in an uptrend guys so you shouldn't be trading long okay then you should be looking for shorts um, and we get another higher high at this point there all right still happy potentially the trend is up but what we see now is all these reversals and we are, remember we are looking at the four hours the one hour and possibly a 15 minutes or 30 minutes at the same time I'll say in this context of 15 minutes. Um, but before we see all of that happening on the four hour, we are seeing this on the one hour, and we are seeing that run up and this massive pin bar. I'm going to make that green line as a uh, green box as small as possible to just identify that candle. That candle there tells us we're now looking for shorts. There's a really good chance that because there's simply no buyers, their buyers have dried up and the buyers are sitting at this 1.2291, okay? Um, we now need to start looking for identifying shorts. doesn't mean the market's going short for the next week or for the next two days. We are looking for a short trade, okay? We are going to, and, and, and on that basis, we can either trade that candle pattern, um, which is a market action indicator, and especially if you put the Brave Art strategy there and you've identified that that's a turning zone, by all means, if you want to be a bit more cautious, what do you want to wait for? You are now wanting to wait for the market to make a lower, to form a low, to come back up for a high, and that high must be a lower high than that high at 1.2323. All right? Do you guys understand that? Guys, please feel free to ask, but I'm now going to just change the block's color into red. 
So you can see that you're potentially looking at a change of trend. And what you want to do is you always want to train, trade with the trend. All right? And we're going to look at that in a moment on the 15 minutes. Oh, excuse me. Okay, well, that's the low. That's the first low it's formed after that high. Now at this point it's still got the potential to make a new a new high somewhere up there. It has. So at this point we're a little bit undecided um, and especially considering if you look at where that red square is, again market action tells us there's a long. Okay. Don't be concerned about being wrong in this market. So even if you trade at that long, that will be a, a, a very much a legitimate trade because at that point, market is still making a higher low, all right? Um, and I hope I'm not confusing you guys, but I'm talking this through live um, and I'm telling you how I see things when I trade. Okay, but unfortunately, you have to block out as if you don't see the rest of this market. Okay? Look at the edge of my chart there. You are not seeing that market. You, at this point, you still don't know that that's a lower high. Or, um, uh, you know, in your books, this is still a higher low. It's a green box, um, and you're looking for longs at this point. Although you've got the warning signs at the previous one that you now look that potentially the market is turning, but you don't know that. You would go long on this. What is the maximum amount you could lose? Your stop loss should be 1.2275. Okay. Um, just below those, those tails of those two candles. You're looking for, you'll take a long. Market does fail to make a higher high. Remember, you're not going to just bail your trade because you want to run to the bank because there's a little bit in it. You have a strategy that you follow. Your market fails, your trade fails to make its target. Yes, you take out on your stop loss or it break even whatever your strategy is. At the moment, the market fails to make a higher high. We have confirmation that at this green box up there, and I'm going to make it nice and big now, that our interpretation of that fail for the market to reach a high was correct. This market falls down, and what we want to do, certainly, uh, depending, again, depending on your strategy, is look at a trade no later than the bottom of the previous loop, because once it breaks, that's our breakout strategy. But um, and hopefully you would have been into this market before that. But when that market fails, and we've had that confirmation a day before, we know that we would look for trade no later than 1.2286, 1.2286, all right? And you would want to go short at that point. No, no uh, moving averages, no, stochast no stochastics, no Fibonacci's, purely on market action, but it's, it's got to be the interpretation that you put towards that. Plus, um, fire some questions while I pull the 15 minute chart up. Folks, if you've got questions, can I send them coming through? I'm not seeing any at the moment, but uh, it's certainly, oh, and I'm sitting here watching my Aussie chart at the same time you're doing this, and I'm, I'm seeing stuff that perhaps I hadn't quite seen before, so uh, we're winning. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I know this price action is a, is a there's a bugger lux to get your, your, your head around. Um, it's out there, it's obvious, but it's not obvious. Um, and it's very difficult because it's not a hard and fast rule. I can't tell you every time you see a pin bar that that's, you know, what happens is unless you, while we're looking at, while I'm pulling the 15 minute chart up, there's lots of pin bars in the market. And if you're going to jump into a trade every time you see a pin bar, you, you're going to take so many losses that the few times you're right, you're not going to, you're not going to win. You're not going to actually do better than break even if you're really lucky. You're going to slowly wipe out your account. You need to understand the combination of, of, of reversal candles um, and how to identify a trend. In, and you need to do that with price action. Rather than looking at an 89 moving average, you, now it's pointing up. Okay, now we're in an uptrend. Okay, remember that that's a really much a lagging indicator. Um, so I like... To, and, and again, Braveheart strategy deals with it. I like to define a trend with the highs and lows, the higher high and the higher low. Um, as soon as you've had three of those, uh, you've got a point to start with, you've got a higher, your market goes up, you form a turn point, that's a high. You come back and the turning point is higher than the previous low, so that's a higher low. 
immediately you've got a trend. You can start trading. So you're getting in quite early into the trend in how to trade. And if you're looking at three charts, and that's what I want to show you about, is that my four-hour chart, let's get back to that, is certainly, I'm going to zoom it out, is in a downtrend, all right? And it might have turned now, we'll have to, that's uh, another subject, but for what we're seeing on our screen, this market's in a downtrend, and I certainly want to trade shorts rather than longs. You might take small shorts, but uh, small longs, but you really are looking for the shorts in this market, because your four hours says to you that the trend is short. If you're going to trade daily, you might find that the daily chart is actually bullish, and the four hours is just in the temporary shorts, but that's irrelevant, okay? You have to concentrate on the time frames that you're working with. So your four hours are, are in the short trend, downtrend. Your one hour, you, where you want to trade, you need to look for shorts rather than long. So you're expecting that to be these little bounces um, on the four-hour, uh, you know, equivalent of the four-hour trade, where the market just pulls back a little bit and then continue the downtrend. And that's those points that you want to identify. And yes, you're going to trade on the one hour, but you want to find a really nice entry on the 15 minutes so that you don't go 30, 40, 60 points away from the turning point before you get into the market. You want to identify that on 15 minutes so that in a few um, seconds or few pips of the turning point, you can identify it, okay, with as least pips wasted as possible. I wouldn't, I can just jump so, in there, a couple of folks asking, what is a pin bar? Okay. It's these bars, these candles with these long wicks or tails under them, it's just, and, and there's different terminology, um, but you would know them as shooting stars or mm -hmm. as hammers, um, all right, it's just if I, if I have to change my chart, okay, guys, let me just zoom in. Okay, there's my 15 minute chart. Let me just zoom it in as much as it will go. Okay, um, let's identify just one here. Okay. You see that bar there? Now it's a bar. Now it's a bar chart. There's no blue and black and, and white candles. And I can't now make it a shooting star or a hammer or a evening star or a morning star or a whatever. All right. So and that's a pin bar, and they just call them pin bars whichever way that sharp point is. Um, they're very similar to candles. You can see this. Uh, let me just the entry of the. The, the market opened at that line. I'm going to change this just to green so it's more visible. Okay. Um, the, you can see I've just put it just below that line, but there it's on it. That's where the, that, can, that bar opened. And that's where that bar closed. All right. And this whole section on top of it is called the pin bar. Um, and it's the same if it's on the reverse, if it's if that long tail or that long line is on the bottom, it's still a pin bar. All right. Um, and there might be other terminologies for it. Uh, you guys can Google it on the internet and make whatever you want to call it, but um, that's what it is. Okay. And all you're trying to do is understand what happens in the market when you see one of those. It means that the direction of that market was moving in, it failed and it came back spectacularly. There was no further traders that committed to moving the market in that direction. And that's really all we're trying to understand with market action. You are trying to understand, and now I put it back to candle pattern, that the, 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 the bulls dried up. They tried, they dried up. Now we had to sit in the market and wait for more eyes to come in come in and they sort of trickled in. You're always going to catch a couple of idiots. I've been there many times. I'm, I've got an idiot written on my forehead lots and lots and lots of times. Okay, so don't feel offended, but it's called experience and it's learning. But And, and a few of us trickle in and we keep buying this um, until we get to an, a, a, a small pin bar there or a four, uh, um, shooting star. Um, you can see there's no color to that candle. It uh, I'll just draw a little box for you. And really the market fails at this point. It's failed horribly. Uh, there we go. Okay. 
at that candle there. Um, there is no bias to go up there. It failed to break the previous high over here, and we are looking to trade short. Okay, and you could enter that. At the, okay, that's my next question. The guy said to me, yeah, but when do I enter the trade on this? Right. Go back to Brave Watch Strategy. It will give you a perfect entry there. Okay? But where you would typically enter a trade like this is at the close of that candle. Okay? And you're going to have to take your stop loss as the little bit of risk to the top of that candle. Either there or the previous high. Uh, I'm going to delete that red box just to not make it okay. So what I've done, guys, is my stop loss is either the top of that pin bar or shooting star or the previous high, which is there. All right. And my entry level is on the bottom green green line. Okay. I'm going to change that to a red line so you know that's if I went short. Okay, these are examples of how you would interpret price action without looking at anything else. Blank chart. Okay, guys, right. I need to answer questions because I could talk about this a lot, but I think I'm going to waffle and not sure if you guys need to hear it. If you have questions, I can try and answer them as specifically and precisely as possible. Frick, same questions. If you got in the text box, we have run over time, uh, but uh, certainly we'll still take some people have to leave. That's fine. Obviously, we are recording this. It will be uploaded tomorrow morning. Um, and just a quick point, people asking about the Braveheart strategy. I did uh, stick it out in the in the chat box. Otherwise, if you go to just one lap and just search Braveheart, it will pop up for you. And, and just a quick point, while Alvin was talking, I was watching all the futures, which is what I trade, and there was it was patently obvious at 820 that there was just a lack of the buyers. And in fact, a short trade there it's got you, it could have taken 50 points, or you're still in the trade for about 20 odd. Um, Elwin Lauren is asking about uh, moving averages. You've got them on the chart. Are they just there for historic reasons, or would you still be using them in, in this environment? Okay. Okay. Um, what I think any trader, regardless of what you trade and what your strategy is, I think moving averages are such a strong indicator in the in, in the forex market certainly that you would be stupid to ignore them because a huge amount of traders and even institutions out there are going to trade off them and certainly the market often stops dead in its tracks on a moving average or bounces off it or it has some reaction to a moving average so for you not to to know where the market is going to react is foolhardy, all right? Or for you to say, well, I'm, I'm ignoring that because my strategy does not make um, account for that. Um, I've not come across a strategy that can afford to ignore uh, sort of given areas of the market that we can fairly safely determine that the market's going to have a reaction to, all right? So whether you like to trade a moving average strategy, and I've put one on webinars, one of the webinars before, or whether you simply just need to understand where there's going to be a, a reaction in the market. And for that reason, moving averages are always part of my charts. All right? Um, even when I don't specifically trade my moving average strategy, um, they're there for that reason because the market will, will react to them. Especially, and this is 15 minutes, it's not such a big um, uh, moving average um, reaction to them. But for certainly one hour and four hours, you get a really strong reactions to, 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 to some of the moving averages, especially ones like the 50, the 100, and the 200, um, and the 240 on the one hour, which is the 10-day moving average. Okay? Uh, big institutional guys um, look at the 10-day moving average a lot. Now, they don't trade it, as I said before, to the tick. Okay? So those guys have millions that they put into it. They feed it into the market. So they don't trade it all at a, a, a specific level, but they feed it in. So the 10-day moving average is not so, um, is, uh, what's a word, so um, specific that the market will just touch it and turn. It will turn in that region. Okay, well, that's answered the, the moving averages. 
Yeah, folks, and if you head to the, the, the Just One Lab, you'll find I mean, Owen has done a, an entire webinar on uh, the moving averages, the different ones he uses and how he fits them together, etc. And that obviously well worth looking looking at and having a, a, a squiz at. Uh, folks, I'm going to leave it there for now. Questions right up, and we're, we're at uh, just over 14 minutes. Let Owen get back to uh, bed and, and a hot toddy. Um, my thanks to all of you for attending. My thanks to Owen. Uh, as he said, we look to do a, a London opening probably that, that week of 20 or 27 August. I'll confirm times with uh, Owen in the next couple of days. Uh, it will be a long one. We'll start at sort of quarter to nine, run through half past ten, quarter to eleven, and we'll run it within the environment of, of a live London opening. So in essence, a, a trading room, and we can see what's happening. No promises as to what will happen. We can't control the markets. Oh, and as always, great. Thanks very much for your time. Ladies Thank and you. gents, thanks very much. Simon? Yeah. Can I quickly interject? Yes. Can I maybe, oh, just based on, on, on the questions we get every time during a webinar, that those folks who are interested um, in, in joining that live two-hour session, if they can at least make every effort to go through what we've done in the past year in terms of webinars so that they do understand what the stuff we're going to talk about. You know, they don't have to be fundies on it, but if they can listen to those webinars, the moving averages, the, the Fibonacci, um, the, the RSI, and all those bits that we've done, and the Braveheart strategy, so they're at least familiar, and this stuff makes sort of sense. Otherwise, to come there as a as total novice, and that's the first bit of the Forex experience you're sitting in, it's, it's not going to be easy. Yeah, good shot. And if you, if you go to just one lap, click on the team page, click on Elwin, you will find the, the, the webinars that he's done. I'm just having a quick squeeze. There's eight, there's ten, there's twelve. Um, some are, are very intro, some are holiday trading, which are obviously not necessarily applicable for this particular environment, but well worth having a squeeze before. Ladies and gents, thanks so much for your time. Elwin, as always, great stuff. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas.